Hey everybody, this is Sean. So look, funny story. I mean, it's like, <laughs> oh, I mean, duh, real funny. So, so Matt and I were hanging out, and he's got his laptop there, and I'm like, hey, dude, you know, I've been having this urge to play frisbee, and he's like, you know what? Me too. I'm like, I don't have a frisbee, and he's like, well, I got my laptop. I'm like, okay, all right, I see where you're going with this. We'll order a frisbee on Amazon. He's like, no, we'll use the laptop as a frisbee. I'm like, ah, it's your laptop. So we're playing frisbee with the laptop. It's going great. We got a good score going 20 times back and forth without dropping it. Not bad, right? Not bad. But you know, I see a bird up in the sky and I'm like, oh shit, that's one big ass bird. And then he threw the his laptop. I missed it, it hit the ground. You know, things happen. And he's like, oh damn, I think I think I busted the battery. And I'm like, nah man, nah man, let's let's plug it in and see see how it works. And you know what? His laptop didn't work. The power wasn't getting to the laptop. The cord wasn't getting all the power into it that it needed to go into. So unfortunately, on this latest podcast, we had to use the cell phone. And you know what? The sound ain't too bad. You know, there's a little bit of hiccups here and there, but you know what? I think you'll enjoy the podcast nonetheless. So sit back, relax, grab a soda. Grab no, actually don't grab a soda. Soda's horrible for you. It's poison, people. It's poison. But grab yourself a beer, a nice handcrafted San Diego brew from Ballast Point, Coronado Brewing. Yeah, no, one of those good good places. Or some water. I, I guess you can drink water too if you want. And then, you know, have a little snack. Maybe nude up. Hey, we're, we here in Cabin Fee, we're not opposed to people getting naked and listening to the podcast. I do it all the time. I recommend it. All right. Enjoy the podcast. That's right. We don't need legit recording equipment. No. We just need a telephone. We're gonna make it happen. It's 2016, people. You know, it's fine. We can actually still wear headphones. <laughs> we could. Maybe just for the feel. <laughs> I'm just gonna put it around my neck. Yeah, yeah. That'll feel like feel for real. Um, what's today? <laughs> the 14th, uh, May 14th. Yeah, we we all made it past Friday the 13th. Mm-hmm. We, we made it through. How yeah. was your How was your Friday? Any uh, anything happen? Crazy? Nothing crazy. Just work. Honestly, didn't even realize it was Friday the thirteenth. I, I know. Yeah, it. it was like any other day. Yeah. yeah. Until I got on Facebook and everyone was reposting like Jason videos. And That's how I know like, anything's going on nowadays <laughs> yeah. from Facebook. I'm like, yeah. oh, it's Mother's Day just passed. Oh shit! Uh, better call <laughs> mom. <laughs> how are these people posting pictures of their mom? Right. Yeah. I get it. I missed something. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I was going to post a picture of me and my mom just to be, I don't know, snarky about it or just be like, just to prove I've got a mother too and uh, I love her. So here's a picture of me and my mom. That's how you know. <laughs> yeah. Does she even get, does your mom even use social media? No, she's not on Facebook. Not, yeah. Nah, no. Nah. Thank it's, you, mom, for staying off Facebook. Yeah. I appreciate it. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of moms on there. It's a little weird sometimes. My mom's so technologically... <laughs> hey, nice it's, uh, it's it's appropriate. <laughs> well, in yeah. Ramona, they don't even get internet, do they? I know they, they live in the dark age. Yeah, I mean, at least where she's at, they don't. They might be the, the happiest people though, because they don't have to deal with all that shit. That's you know, true. they're free and clear of Snapchat and Facebook and Instagram, mm-hmm. yeah. all three apps that I do like. Yeah, it's interesting though because you really get to see how much like the uh, cable companies and dish 
they have a dish network like completely gouge people oh yeah and then you, you watch some of the content they have is just like you know, tons of, you know, infomercial stations and then commercials and whatnot. And it's just like, it, you get so much more accessibility with the internet. Like, so it's, true. It's what, it's you can filter out watch. all that crap, mm -hmm. all that advertising and, and all those weird shows. It seemed like they're pandering to like a lower denominator of human being, you know? Yeah. Like to me, like I wasn't uh, uh, that big into the big bang theory, but just like other sitcoms, it's just simple jokes. Right. It's not, brain surgery you know it's not like they're really hitting their stride comedically with big bang theory right not like it's always sunny which or even like right. i just got back into rewatching seinfeld like all the old episodes oh, okay. and that's that shows genius and everything every episode that they've done it it can still be relatable today even mm -hmm. though it's 2016 and that's like they didn't even have cell phones and things like that back then yeah it's all that stuff that they commentated on through comedy is still very, very relatable today. Oh, huh, that's interesting. If you get a chance, check it out. Like yeah. revisit old Seinfeld episodes, yeah. especially going, cause I'm starting from the first season and working my way up to the, you know, obviously until the finale. So I'm stoked about that. Nice. Do you have the seasons or? They yeah. On DVD. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. I bought them a, a while ago and I just was saving them, uh -huh. you know, I'm like, you know what? I'll get back into this sometime. <laughs> save it. When save the time it. Is right. Exactly. <laughs> that's cool that time's right people mm -hmm. did you ever watch curb, curb oh Jam yes Jam? that's hilarious yeah. hilarious and uh, obviously larry david had a huge play uh, you know part in seinfeld and yeah. everything but yeah curb your enthusiasm took it to a whole nother level and yeah. so funny i love that show. some really crazy. really crazy episodes yeah <laughs> and then it was on hbo so they could do a lot oh, of that's right. a lot of crazy shit on that yeah yeah compared to you know nbc in the 90s right that's true So, what happened to your Jeep? Oh yeah. <laughs> oh, I've got some. Oh yeah. So I've got uh, some some uh, milestones with the old Jeep. So, okay. first, like, let's get to what you mentioned. My Jeep got broken into for the third time on the exact same street, and it happened on Cinco de Mayo, the night of Cinco de Mayo, and it, it was raining. So I guess it's a good opportunity to get out there, yeah. and and I have a soft top Jeep, so it's not. It's not the most secure vehicle. It's an easy prey, especially mm -hmm. if you're trolling the streets. So where I live, I live in a what I would consider a nicer neighborhood compared to the surrounding area. So I live in the college area right off of El Cajon Boulevard and uh, or off a of university, excuse me. And uh, right across on the other side of university, it's just ghetto, shitty, meth heads, crackheads, wannabe gangsters and stuff. So they, you know, they'll come up to the nicer neighborhoods, probably do some patrolling and they're like, okay, we'll hit them, you know, the yeah. night or two later. And I just have an easy target to get into. So luckily, like in the past uh, two other times, the first time they, I had an old, uh, an old, uh, the original top that mm -hmm. came with the Jeep. So they, it was real easy and brittle just from sun exposure. So they basically just ripped, ripped, uh, because with the soft top, like there's side paneling that ha have zippers. So they've mm. been trying to like get in through the side paneling and they just ripped the whole zipper because it was, you know, hard to work because it was so old. So they ripped that. And then uh, maybe like a year later, I finally, after taping it up, I finally, oh, I'll just get a new, new top. So I get a new top. And then like a couple months later, it gets, well, while I'm in Peru doing ayahuasca, I come back to my Jeep. The side paneling is, um, uh, cut with a knife or a straight edge or razor or something like that. And I'm like, Oh, that fucking sucks. And yeah. it was a brand new top too at that time. And then, so yeah, the first time they, um, uh, stole my GPS, um, stereo front plate. They were trying to get the actual stereo out of it. Um, they weren't successful. And then they stole, um, like headphones and just whatever thing they could, little things that they could find. And then, um, Second time, they didn't steal anything. I think it was more of someone being an asshole, vandalizing my vehicle, less than like someone trying to steal it, yeah, steal stuff from it. And then so now the third time, so they stole the the new GPS that I had, but it was a couple years old, so whatever. 
Um, uh-huh. Then they stole, which really sucks. They stole my chargers <laughs> key ring thing. Uh-huh. I just had it like up on my dash area, uh-huh. and they stole that, motherfuckers. They Is stole like a keychain. Yeah, it's like a little keychain. It just uh-huh. says San Diego Chargers on it. It's like old school too. So I, like- mom had it like way back in the oh. day, and she, I'm like, oh hey, can I have that? She's like, yeah, sure. Like, now it's gone yeah. forever. And then um, they stole all my change, left like five pennies. Uh-huh. So thanks, bro. Appreciate it. <laughs> Um, they actually left surprisingly a lot of stuff. They didn't steal my uh, stereo faceplate this time, which uh-huh. is great. Don't have to worry about trying to replace the stereo again. Yeah, yeah. Um, and uh, they at least closed the door. It was raining, so thanks yeah. for closing the door. Appreciate it. They didn't rip the top or anything. They just unzipped it. It's very uh-huh. easy to do that. There's got to be like locks or something. Make it a little you know, a little less desirable to try to break in, you yeah. know, a little bit more of a hassle. I thought about getting an alarm, but I, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know if it's worth it to yeah. do it. Um, and I'm not going to be living in this area for at least another six, seven months. So I'll, I'll be out of this area. So yeah. I think I could hopefully last. The pattern goes every like year or two, it, it gets broken into. Right, right. Yeah. <laughs> so hopefully I'll be good for that time frame. Hopefully not the same people I don't, I don't think it is. I don't. Or... Yeah, that would suck because they yeah. know, like, hey, there's that Jeep broken into it last time. Yeah. Let's get into it again. Hey, let's go get another GPS. Uh, right, exactly, <laughs> yeah, exactly. So I did actually just buy a new GPS because I was trying my phone. It just sucks on my phone because yeah. I have Ting, and sometimes if you're in weird areas, it doesn't pick up like a good, you know, Wi-Fi signal. So right. I just I'd rather just have a GPS. So I picked up a new GPS, and I will never keep it in my Jeep. I'm always going to bring it inside every single time. And I, I keep my glove box locked. I keep my mm. center console locked. It must just be really easy to undo those locks. Yeah. It, it didn't. They didn't break the locks or anything. They were just unlocked, and I lock them every single time because oh, obviously okay. my Jeep's been broken into several times. Right. Huh. Um, so, yeah, it's just a big bummer. And, right. you know, it's, they didn't steal enough for me to, like, do a police report or anything like that. They yeah. didn't actually break anything or anything like that. Um, they did steal a couple other little dumb shit. Like, nothing yeah. I think they could even really make money off of. They're probably disappointed. I hope I so, mean, yeah. Imagine. Yeah. Well, not... they did get the GPS. They'll probably get 20, 30 bucks uh, yeah. maybe from it. That's true. They can buy some. I'm assu- These are garbage people. I'm assuming they're trash people. They're right. just, drug sh- yeah, drug addicts. They're trying to get their fix. Yeah. You know, I, yeah, yeah I, I don't know. It's just dummies that live in the area and they see easy prey and that's my Jeep. Yeah, but you've got your business advertised on the side. Mm. They should be like. And I think that's also another thing. They think, oh, maybe there's some oh, camera right. equipment in there. Maybe there's something uh valuable in there so I, I have thought about taking off those magnets and i will eventually i just they're on there now so yeah and on my jeep i just have my i'm advertising my business so it just says sean evans photography and my phone number and shit like that nice um yeah so then the the next uh, big event was i reached two hundred thousand miles wow. and i was able to witness it too like i actually was I actually glanced down and i'm like oh shit Wow. That's a lot of zeros, and there's a two in front. That's yeah. crazy. That is crazy. Yeah, and the Jeep's still going. So I bought the Jeep when I think it had, I want to say, forty or 50,000 miles wow. on it. So I put quite a lot, a lot of miles on it, a shit ton of miles. So just from doing um, uh, doing my photography business, driving right. all over San Diego, and then I did um, edit, edit. <laughs> um <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I did um, uh, this cowbird thing, which oh, yeah. I, I don't know if I've explained it on the podcast before, maybe a long time ago in one of the mm-hmm. older podcasts. So I uh, used to do uh, every springtime, uh, there's uh, this biologist who would do this uh, uh, conservation program. And uh, these, uh, they're called the brown headed cowbird. And what they are, they're an invasive species of bird that um, will lay their eggs in the native species of birds' nests. And uh, so what happens is the cowbirds are a much more aggressive bird once they are hatched. Mm -hmm. So they'll, you know, fight the native species birds. They'll fight them for it. And then usually those birds die off and then it just leaves the cowbirds there. And then it leaves the native bird taking care of the cowbirds. So first off, it's a cunty (laughs) female bird just dropping off her kids and let someone else take care of them. Um, So... 
this program, it, it they set up all these giant wooden traps, like all over Camp Pendleton, all over uh, Oceanside, um, Bonzel area, and um, they're designed to attract the cowbirds into the into the traps, and it's to keep that population lower, keep them down, so that the native species of birds can you know properly yield the what they need to yield. You yeah. know, they're their actual young instead of taking care of the cowbirds. So I did that for quite a quite a lot of years and it was a lot of driving like i would i drive a jeep so it's not cheap to fill up my gas tank especially a couple years ago when gas was really expensive and i would have to fill up you know maybe every other day yeah and that was like for like three months that's That's a lot of gas and a lot of miles a lot of driving made good money doing it now i don't do it anymore thankfully um but uh yeah it's just uh a, a lot of a lot of miles in that yeah. jeep and it's been fun and for the most part the jeep has been pretty good yeah like nothing too crazy mechanically right now it's having like a weird ele- electrical computer issue which mm. is like fucking up my transmission and and how i can accelerate and stuff but it's still getting me you getting me around so i'm okay. just gonna keep going i guess it until the wheels fall off. yeah it's still it's reasonable computer. shape and yeah. and jeeps kind of hold up their value so even with two hundred thousand miles and i've always kept it really you know, I've always always taken to the mechanic and let them do the thing, and you know, oil changes and all that stuff. So, because well, I, you know, Jeep's awesome, so I want to keep it for as long as possible. Yeah. So, always maintained it. So, uh, hopefully, I'll be able to keep it even when I do live in the van. I just have to figure out where I'm going to store it, or right. maybe I'll figure out like a a good place I can, a couple of different places I can drop it off, and then park the jeep the van nearby, and then just use the jeep to get around yeah. until I get a scooter. Eventually, I want to get a. 150 cc scooter but you got to get your motorcycle license and all that. Really? oh yeah it sucks i didn't know that yeah i thought yeah. you didn't have to not well in other states not oh, california okay. damn yeah and even on a moped you have to get have a motorcycle what? i know yeah. i thought about i'll just get a fucking moped then yeah i thought about getting one for long especially living in claremont yeah so close yeah together. you can just bum around i'm sure like there's probably ways to get around it like say because people can fabricate, uh, fabricate like bicycles and put like a little uh, engine on it. Yeah, and it'll yeah. and it'll get you going. I, yeah. I doubt you have to get a motorcycle's license no, for that, for sure. unless the cops pull you over and really want to be dicks about it. Yeah. Huh. Well, that'd be cool though. Mm-hmm. My dad just got a fold up bike for his. Oh, rig, nice! So cool. He can drive around. He, it Sweet. Was, it was really inexpensive on Amazon. Oh yeah, it's not too bad. Yeah. Yeah, they got yeah. you know obviously they got like thousand dollar ones and then they got ones for like a couple hundred bucks. Yeah. yeah, that's cool. Yeah, just got a bike myself. Oh, you did! Nice. Yeah. Just a little mountain bike. I yeah, for my friend. Sweet. Replaced the tires already. Yeah, Running buddy. The other day. I was like, wow, I haven't ridden a bike in so long. Did it feel good? Get it out did there. Feel good. Yeah. It's freeing when you get out there too. Like you're yeah. like, oh shit, I'm cruising along. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Is it a twelve speed, like ten speed yeah, mountain it's bike? Yeah, like it's got like eight. It's got speed. Cheap Walmart bike. I was like, oh, if I actually like do ride this and use it a lot then yeah you upgrade after a while yeah because it's kind of a cheapy little bike but yeah no reason whatever. to buy like a 500 hundred dollar bike when exactly yeah it could it could theoretically just sit there <laughs> yeah know, exactly but you know <laughs> we'll see yeah <laughs> so yeah well that's a bummer man I, you know people are shitheads like that i know it sucks it sucks that you know the Jeep is such an easy target. I know. Yeah. yeah it really and then is. going in during the rain, I mean, that is so shady. It I mean, is. It makes a lot of sense. Yeah. But of course, like, we wouldn't have thought about that. You know? Right. Yeah. But yeah. Like, I would think, oh, this is the night people won't be out stealing. Exactly. Don't want to get wet. Criminals. Damn criminals. Oh, Assholes. So, yeah, speaking of, I uh, mentioned Instagram a little bit ago. Mm-hmm. The new logo is dog shit. I know. It's so retarded. I look at it and I'm like, because I did take some classes in graphic design at hmm. Coleman University. Hmm. Complete waste of time. Don't ever do it, people. Well, don't give them advertising. Well, it's advertising <laughs> to yeah. anti-advertising. Yeah, yeah. Um, them up. <laughs> yeah so it, that logo looks like they went to, uh, like, that was an assignment at, in oh, class. Yeah. They're like, remake the Instagram logo, What? how would you make it? And mm. then it's just this dumb gradient and it's like a simplified camera and it just looks so stupid. And the reasoning is like, we want to simplify the app. And and then they mention the rainbow. I'm like, what the well, fuck? Yeah, this is trying to cash in on I, I think so. The one, I guess. Yeah, right. Exactly. Yeah. The 
pandering is what they're doing. It's just yeah. weird. It, it, I don't know. I'm just bummed that they changed it. And I was reading because they posted a photo that everyone could see of the new logo. And mm -hmm. then I was looking at the comments. And everyone was like, this sucks. This is stupid. Why did mm -hmm. you change the logo? Mm -hmm. I'm like, oh, maybe they'll change it back. Or maybe they'll stick to their guns and be like, no, we're keeping it. Yeah. This is the new logo. I don't think they... I don't think they'll change it back. I don't, I don't think they don't they care. Yeah, I don't think yeah. They don't care. People are still gonna do use Instagram. Yeah, it's a it's Instagram's so big though that original logo is just you see it everywhere. And it's like it would be like it's awesome. I'm not equating it to the Coca Cola uh, you know logo, but right. that's iconic. They did, no reason to change that. Right. And they have tweaked it, but it's still the same basic logo. And when they went back to the classic, people loved it. They're like, right. yeah, the classic Coca Cola logo. Yeah. Yeah. yeah exactly. So it I, matters. Branding yeah. and all this and marketing, I just don't get why they changed it. Mm -hmm. I don't get it. Did you speaking of logo changes? Did you see the Budweiser change? Yeah. What I they, they, saw something about it. Well, they, yeah. Explain it. Budweiser. They put just America. Yeah, America. Yeah, yeah. And it was funny because I didn't even realize. And I'm sure it's wide open, but that they're not even owned by, they're not even an American company anymore. Yeah, it's Belgian or yeah. German or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. It's just crazy. <laughs> like, <laughs> using our own word, like, against us, I feel like. That would be something you'd just do, like, mm. this is for 4th of July, we're going to put out the American yeah. beers or something. True, something yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. And on that same note, uh, I was talking to this guy I work with, and he used to work for Hostess. Mm. And Hostess went under like four years ago, mm -hmm. and they went bankrupt. And a guy bought, um, bought it. Oh yeah, that was like the Twinkies are gonna die out right. thing, right? right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So a guy bought it for for cheap, and they get, the, apparently this guy is known for buying businesses like that that have gone under and rebranding them and turning them to success. Yeah. And a good example of that is he bought Paps Blue Ribbon. Oh. And rebranded it, remarketed it to China as a, an American beer. Yeah. And it's like worth a ton of money now because all of China buys Pabst because right, like, right. Oh, this is American beer. And then remember the Pabst like resurgence? Y yes, and absolutely. Like hipster yes. beer. Like it was ironic because it was yeah, yeah. the worst of the beer. And oh now, yeah. And now you go and it's, it's just as expensive like as any other I beer know. or even more expensive. <laughs> you're right. Like a really shitty beer, but you're just paying now for the brand, for the logo. <laughs> If you if you live in San Diego, go to a bar pink and you'll they'll let you know what the new hipster beer is. Now it's I think it's Takati with a lime. Yeah, that's Ticati. the cheap beer. Yeah, yeah. It yeah. used to be the the Paps because they you'd see everyone with the tall tall, tall can of Paps at, at bar pink or all those hipster places. Yeah. You want to switch chairs? No, no, no. I'm okay. Good. I think he's sitting in that driver's chair. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> so it's like, everything feels different now. <laughs> but yeah, no, that's, that's a good point. And like Takati is such a cheap. Cheap beer, cheap beer you know, yeah. Probably like, whoa, work for this one. Let's work for this exactly, one. Exactly, exactly. It's pretty funny. <laughs> Clever. <laughs> yeah, the Instagram one, that's a bummer. It's just, uh, what were your initial thoughts? Like, you're just like, oh, they changed the logo or. You know what? I have purposefully not updated Instagram in a long time since they changed the way they do the post. Did you know that? They changed the way your feed works mm. it, to where it shows the more popular posts first. Really? And then That's takes, how they're doing it. Yeah, so it's it's not in chronological It's on a proper order. timeline then. Mm -hmm. Ah, the bastards. Yeah, so I read they were going to do... That's why pe uh, certain pages were advertising turn on notifications. Mm -hmm. So when they post something, it notifies your phone. Oh, yeah. Because otherwise it might get buried in your feed because yeah. it's not... You know, if you if you follow popular people or, or businesses and they have thousands yep. of likes, they're going to show up first. Yeah. Then your friends, you know, are just like doing whatever... It's going to be at the bottom because, you know, like 10 people like their photo or something like that. What a bummer. Yeah, so it's bullshit. So I'm like, well, I want to see my friend's post before exactly, yeah. all this other one. So I just haven't updated Instagram in a while. <laughs> and it keeps way to telling me, like, you haven't updated it. And I'm like, I know. <laughs> <laughs> so my logo is still the same and the order is still the same. There sh yeah, there should be a way that you can manipulate it on your phone to be like, no – you know, I don't want to upgrade it uh -huh. type of thing. Yeah. Well, I have, that's how my settings are. Yeah. I, I didn't do automatic updates. Oh, uh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Smart. Stingy like smart that. move. So then eventually, but eventually apps won't let you use them until you update. And yeah. Then, unfortunately, that's what you have to do. But yeah. I found that it's usually like, like my banking app that does that. Mm. Not, nothing of like any important. Yeah. Or of like social media wise. You know? 
Yeah, my computer keeps wanting me to upgrade to Windows 10. I've got whatever, Windows 7. I'm like, I'm cool with this. It's doing its job. And I've heard all these like weird things about Windows 10 and all these bugs and shit. I'm like, I, I'm good. I'm always I'm good. sketch about that stuff too because it's like, depending on how old your computer is. It? Right, yeah. It could just completely bog down my computer because it's trying to work with the operating system. My computer's already pretty much tapped out on memory. So I'm like uh -huh. always trying to like delete pictures I don't need and like constant fluctuating of what I'm constantly using and putting it on other you know drives and things like that well and you're a photographer and so you've got a shit ton of pictures oh do yeah you, shit ton do you do a lot of cloud uh storage no i don't no, nah. don't well i guess dropbox but that's only for my client's stuff okay so no nah, i don't i don't really trust the cloud mm -hmm. and then i feel i mean if it if celebrities nude photos are getting hacked and someone really wanted to get to my shit they could just take all my work true yeah so yeah and there's probably a way to get off my laptop anyways without me knowing so do um do you keep all your clients photos or like oh I, your, yeah i try to yeah most shoots? of my, yeah i've done so many real estate shoots like i've got a a shit ton a shit ton of photos mm -hmm. what i'll do is i'll keep the ones that i actually edited and felt oh, okay. like were the best photos and i'll delete all the other photos and sometimes uh, some shoots i might take couple hundred photos of it's depending on the size of the house so it's like a shit ton of photos to whittle down to maybe uh 30 to 40 edited photos that i would you know put in a dropbox for a realtor for whoever yeah whatever it, you know whatever client it is be a wedding or event or whatever it might be yeah so yeah i've tried to keep all those photos just in case you know maybe they're like hey in a month or two they're like hey you know uh, we want to re relist the house. You saw those old, fold old, oh, okay. old photos, you know, just in case. Backup right. photos. Yeah, I don't keep yeah. them all on my computer. Like, I've got a drive where it's like, you know, certain dates that I feel like, uh, you know, it's been long enough. So I'll just keep them on this drive. Oh, okay. And then maybe eventually I'll go through them all and be like, ah, oh, this is, there's no reason to keep these photos. Right. Yeah. That's a good idea. But I still have <laughs> shit, so many. Yeah, and that's like the majority of my memory taken up is probably music and then all the photos yeah. that I have. Yeah. yeah. Well, I'm going to do uh, I'm going to ask you, okay. would you rather? Okay, yeah. It'll all right. Come so, back to me. All right, cool. Would you rather mm -hmm. live in the Game of Thrones universe mm. or the Walking Dead universe? Mm. Well, not too familiar with Walking Dead, but I, I think you got the imagine. gist of it. Yeah, I can't yeah. imagine. That's rough. That's a hard question. Yeah. I don't think either of those are very appealing <laughs> yeah. at all. I mean, <sighs> I guess The Walking Dead sounds appealing because it is, you know, living in like the United States and like this mm -hmm. almost, you know, post-apocalyptic kind of atmosphere. At least there's familiarity. And, exactly. You, know. you are having to like survive with the uh, zombies or whatever walking around. So yeah, that's you, tough. Yeah, you don't have to learn sword fighting and how to shoot a bow and arrow right. and ride a horse. and Right. That's true. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, it's, it's a hard choice because, like, especially right now in Game of Thrones, it's just like, you feel like everyone is just struggling. Like, oh, so yeah. bad right now. And, like, the, <laughs> yeah. and winter's coming and stuff, and you just don't know what's going to happen. It's just, like, it seems like a much more stressful. Uh, well, they might have their own Walking Dead situation coming up on, yeah, on Game of true. Thrones. So, shit, that's like double yeah. trouble right there. That's true. I didn't even think about that. So yeah, neither did I when I wrote that question. Now I'm like, maybe not Game of Thrones because I'm like, maybe I'll do Game of Thrones because it all depends on where you're at. You yeah, know? yeah. In, in the high hierarchy of true. Game of Thrones. That's true. Yeah, I wouldn't mind being hanging out in uh, restaurants or you know, in yes, one of those nicer places, a little more yeah. tropical. Dorn. Yeah, Dorn would Dorn be great. Cool. Yeah, yeah. And then to see dragons flying around. Like, <laughs> yeah. that's actually the first thing I thought of. I'm like, it'd be yeah. cool to see some dragons. Yeah, just as long as they're not burning down my village or yeah. anything like that cool cool yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. if you're just you know i guess one of the peasant people mm. you know and one day your queen walks by and she's completely naked uh, yeah i'm like well the... free show yeah, hell you yeah get to, and you get to throw fruit at her <laughs> <Yeah>. awesome <laughs> hell yeah <laughs> be pretty entertaining i guess shame shame <laughs> shame oh, that was funny. and then walking dead now now we're in a point with Walking Dead where it's like zombies, they're bad and all. It's only when they're like, there's a hundred of them in, in a group. Now you're worrying about people, like the other factions of groups that have formed and 
Now it's down to like, you know, I guess if you were watching, it would be like Rick's group. And then now there's this other group. This, right. Call him Negan. And he's like this badass dude. And I don't think I'd want to do The Walking Dead. Yeah. It's too fucking crazy. Yeah. There's just a lot going on in that fucking thing. Yeah. Yeah. It's hard to say because you're talking about like physically a place where you want to live but yeah because it's a show like all you know of is struggling that this is character. true yeah you could potentially have a nice little cabin up in the woods right. don't have to worry about anybody you're self-sufficient yeah, you're so just chilling you got a big wall. maybe occasional zombie comes along mm -hmm. yeah it yeah yeah okay yeah. okay you know you're winning me over on that yeah you're in a high rise no thing. dragons which is cool right don't have to worry about that invading armies a little yeah. less likely and in the world of Game of Thrones, I mean, it's a pretty big world. And, True. And yeah. You could also chill out in the mountains in the cabin. I don't yeah. have to worry about all these fucking wars and who's fucking who. And Yeah. Yeah. Cabin. Life. Damn. <sighs> so. What's your final decision? Well, I'd still say, based on that, probably Walking Dead. Okay. Just because I guess it's still a more modern setting. I'm going for Game of Thrones. There you go. <laughs> Okay. Okay. I still can't think of my question. I had a good photography question. Oh, oh yeah. This is it. Lay it on me. Did your finger ever cramp up? No, no. No. But when I'm shooting events, because I'm holding my camera and it's huh. pretty heavy, so yeah, my wrist does after a while start to hurt. If yeah. I'm doing events, weddings, if I'm just holding my camera constantly, uh -huh. if it's like on a tripod when I'm doing a lot of Amazon uh, uh, food photography, it's just on the tripod. Oh, okay. When I'm doing real estate, uh, most of the time it's just on the tripod. Oh, okay. So I guess I'm picturing you like walk, like walking around your your real estate. Oh no, this finger is good all day, every day. Yeah, yeah, and I can switch up fingers too if I really need to. Oh. Oh, yeah. Oh, multi-fingered wow. photographer. <laughs> <laughs> He's got multiple fingers. <laughs> <laughs> well, do you want to talk about your new job that you've been uh, kind of uh, taking on last couple of weeks? Want to get sure. down to it? Yeah? Yeah. It is, uh, I, work for, I, work for, well, I work for Costco. Uh, everybody knows what Costco is. Uh, there's about... 600 plus Costco warehouses worldwide and then we do have a few like a handful I want to say like 13 uh, different warehouses called business centers and they cater specifically to businesses their inventory is different uh, than a normal Costco um, and they sell like a lot of like restaurant supplies office supplies and then a lot of a lot of normal like food and vending things like that and then, so ours in San Diego has a fleet of, of delivery trucks, and uh, I've been training as a truck driver, basically. Yeah, buddy. Basically, coming in the morning, your truck's ready to rock, and then you have a specific route for the day, and it takes you to a certain area of San Diego, and uh, that's what I've been doing. How do you like it? It's good. It's nice to be outside of a regular warehouse, um, but it's a lot of work. It's a lot of yeah, because you're a veteran of Costco and you've spent uh, many a years inside and outside the store. Yeah. So it's this is going to be nice to getting a different taste of a different side of Costco, mm -hmm. like completely separate from the actual dealing with customers face to face, except for the couple that you have to deal with when you're doing the deliveries right. and things like that. Yeah. But what I found is especially because like you're bringing them stuff, like all the customers are probably great. so stoked. Yeah, Happy nice. to see you. They're bored at their oh, businesses yeah, yeah. and their offices, so they want to talk and stuff. And that part's really cool. Uh, the other drivers are, are all cool. Yeah. Um, and the schedule is awesome. Anyone that works in retail knows, like, you don't get set days off and your, yeah. your times yeah. vary. And this is the first time I've ever had, like, a set schedule. So Yeah, we're, we're recording on Saturday, and you'd normally probably be working right yeah, now, I'd right? I'd be working, definitely. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Definitely. Between like ten thirty and seven o'clock on Saturdays and Sundays, yeah. and busy as hell. And those are busy days, yeah. <laughs> busy as hell. So it's nice. Uh, I don't know. Uh, I don't know if I'm gonna stick with it. Yeah. Unfortunately. Well, yeah. What do you? Yeah. yeah what I'm is on, it? Just not feeling it? Is the schedule getting up early? Like, is no, it just uh? What is it? I'm on loan from my building, so I have one more week at the business center, then I go back. Uh, but they just opened up official driving positions, which I'm free to assign. Another advantage is 
a lot of people come to the driving fleet as drivers and they don't already work for Costco, but because I already work for Costco, I have a lot of seniority amongst the drivers. So there's about almost 30 drivers. And I'd say seniority wise, I'm probably number five or six. Wow. Because of the time I've spent at Costco. So do, the, do the other I, drivers know this? Yeah. Oh, okay. Is it's there been, animosity? It's been talked about. Is there animosity? You know, it's, it's this new guy mm, over yeah. here. People uh, have told me like, Drivers complain about it all the time because any like this girl just started nine months ago there and she has just as much seniority as me and mm. she automatically got like a full time route of her. Nice. Trip. Yeah. So people complain, but most mo- everyone said like they don't really hold it against the drivers themselves because it's just like it's, it's just, just circumstance. It's, yeah, it's how it's structured. Yeah, it's, and that would happen if you were to say <clears throat> you were to go to a different store, your seniority goes with you, right? To yep. the other store. So it's yeah. the same deal. And in, in the warehouse, it's much different because you have people that have worked there 25, 30 years. Oh, yeah, yeah. So I've gotten, I'll have nine years in next month. So that's a lot just for the driving part of it. Yeah. Not, not necessarily the warehouse part of it. Right. So, so you wouldn't even so want to do it just like, I'll just do this for a year. I'm still at Costco. If I decide, they'll probably let me back in the store if I yeah. want it. Or you just, because it's not like a guaranteed thing yet. Or I, I guess I just, I really haven't made the decision. Mm. And this week, supposedly after monday i'll be taking my own routes and driving my own truck and maybe and that'll y- yeah you'll see what it's it like there yeah. yeah but it is it's a it's like any other job and it's like costco it's run really thin it, it, there's a lot of stress you have a lot of orders and on top of it you're driving a, a big truck yeah and, yeah and it's you know the slightest little brush against a fence or anything the any accident, kind of accident report and everything has got to be filled out yeah, yeah you're taking off the truck for like a month you have to work in the building and it's just like i don't know if i want to deal with that it's a lot of risk you know yeah yeah and the pay there is a little bit better pay but it's not substantial yeah yeah and that's because i'm topped out yeah the other drivers not necessarily topped out so they're trying to get to that point Mm -hmm. so they're willing to put up with all these other things and i'm at a place now at costco where I could maybe foreseeably go to even a different, another part of the, of the company. Yeah. Still Monday through Friday. Yeah. And not have to. Like working in an office yeah. position or something. Yeah. Uh-huh. Doing inventory. Yeah. And auditing and things like that. So I don't know. If those are open. Yeah. I would say go for that. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Because I, I know what it's like to do the delivery. Definitely not on your scale, but a little bit lower scale. Yeah. When I was delivering groceries for Vons.com and it's very stressful and there's so many elements you got to deal with, weather, other mm-hmm. drivers. And I definitely hit a couple of things that I did not report yeah. when I was driving that vehicle because yeah. it's like, it's just way too much hassle and just like, fuck it, it's okay. And yeah. I didn't dam like not damaging other people's property or or necessarily like vehicles or anything like that, but a pole might get bumped or mm-hmm. might ride up on a, a curb accidentally or you might, you know swing a little too much and like scrape a little bit of like a, you know, one of the signs that, yeah. you know, that are on the side of the road, like a stop sign or something, you know, a little shit like that. And just a lot of variables when you're driving a vehicle, especially a very large one, like you guys are driving. Yeah. And you had to get uh, your class C, right? Uh, class B. Get class B. Then. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah exactly. And, and then, you know, they'll pull you off the truck and, and stuff like that. So I'm sure there's a lot that goes unreported because people don't want to, yeah. Do it, do it. But there's also situations I had like yesterday where I delivered to Valley Center and then went over to Paul Casino. There was an accident, so I had to take this other route. Mm. Well, this route takes you up this like crazy windy hill, oh, shit. The residential, and the truck can make it, but you're having to negotiate these turns and there's trees and there's trees with branches hanging over. And at a certain point, it's like you have to just hit the branches because right. it's like, you can't, I mean, they weren't huge, but it's just like, I can't run into the other side of the road. There's right, traffic. Yeah. I can't stop and wait because there's yeah. a ton of cars behind me. So the, even my driver I was with, he's like, you're just going to have to hit them. So right. Like, just do it. So it's yeah. just like, those kind of situations are frustrating because if it were to damage the truck, then I have to go sit down with the manager and go through like what happened and right. then sit there and have them tell me, well, yeah, you should have just waited however long it took to go around the branch yeah even yeah if it was like and then it would turn into like a half hour and then they'd be like why are you so late getting back yeah you know, yeah like, yeah well, you should have just went through it exactly <laughs> so it's a game you know it's a game that all the drivers play of yeah like you know just have to say like well i'll try to be safe and then yeah. they can't say anything to you and like this stuff so yeah 
you know, I, I think it'll be nice to, t- to take a week, do it, drive on my own, get a real feel for how it's going to be, mm-hmm. and then go back to my warehouse because I'm already scheduled. Go back there for a while yeah. and then see where, okay. Like yeah. Where so, yeah, it's cool. It's good that you do have those options, though. Yeah. Yeah. And it's opening up for you. And then, yeah, and then you could always just keep looking after those inventory jobs and stuff mm-hmm. like that, right? Yep. Get training and yep. all that. So. Awesome. Mm-hmm. And now you do know you've got a taste for what it's like to drive. you got a feel for it. And if, you know, down the road, if you're like, hey, you know what? Maybe I would do that driving job or whatever. So at least yeah. you got a feel for it. You know what it's like. Right. It's got to be pretty crazy driving one of those big ass trucks yeah. though, yeah? It's cool. Yeah. I'm definitely getting used to driving it. Like, that job would be perfect if it was, you were only scheduled six hours because mm-hmm. you probably work eight anyway. Cause right. there's always overtime. But then it wouldn't be like, I've had a few 10 hour days already. And mm-hmm. it's just like, by the, those last few stops and then sitting in traffic, you're just so wiped out. Have you had to piss in a bottle yet? No. Oh, I did that so often. Oh, really? Yeah, because I was driving in areas where there just wasn't it, like a gas station or anything like oh, that. Yeah. I'm like, I got to piss. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, that hasn't come up yet. Oh, but what? our stops are very frequent. Too. Oh, okay. Yeah. Very frequent. Yeah, that's true. And uh, so, yeah, if you only had, you know, if you only had six hour a day and if you didn't have to unload the truck <laughs> <laughs> or if we just, because we unload it, we'll break it down and bring it like downtown up to your office. And stuff. Right. Yeah. And it's yeah. just like, yeah. <laughs> it's up so much time. Yeah. So if I was just like my dad or who just drives and delivers and yeah. all the dr- tra- drivers, they're like, I'll talk about like, yeah, maybe I'll get my class A one day and you can deliver for Costco too. You just go to a depot and then you drive to the warehouses. Yeah. It's super easy. You just back on up and they back just, in. everyone else unloads and mm-hmm. you just, all right, back, back there. Yeah. That's not bad. It's money. It's not bad at all. Yeah. We'll see. That's cool. Yeah. It's all in the works. Mm-hmm. Awesome, man. Yeah. Very cool. All right. So transitioning to the next one. So mentioned this a few podcasts back. No wanks. Oh, yeah. So I did I did attempt no wanks. Right. I did did do it. It lasted for four days. Four days. According to my notes. <laughs> <laughs> Felt like months. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So. The whole premise behind no wanks is to stop masturbating, stop watching porn. And the only way that you can relieve yourself is, you know, with a woman, Mm -hmm. potentially with a a girlfriend type of situation, or at least getting, uh, helping you to get yourself out of your box Mm -hmm. that you create for yourself and getting you out there to go flirt, go do your thing with women and do, do all that fun stuff. And then, so yeah, it definitely did increase my... Wanting to hit up chicks, to go do stuff, hang mm-hmm. out, do all that fun stuff that, uh, especially since last year, it wasn't that great. I know I keep mentioning it, but 2015, I was definitely not in the mo- m- mood or the mode to like want to flirt and pursue. Yeah, pursue yeah. trying to get in a relationship with the girl when I felt like I'm not in a position to get in a relationship and mm-hmm. would be very fun. So uh, I tried out No Wings. I lasted for four days and. I want to try it again. Okay. And I want to try to actually keep keep pursuing it, uh-huh. lasting longer. It's just so hard. I, I literally, it was just out of boredom. And right. oddly enough, a little weird. I, I don't know how it is for women, but it's kind of a nice stress reliever, especially yeah. when you got a lot going on. And I was uh, – like cutting back on everything, being it uh, smoking the old cannabis and cut cut down on drinking. I don't really drink that much anymore. Usually just in these podcasts and uh-huh. maybe one or two beers when I'm editing a, a shit ton of photos. But other than that, I'm not really drinking too often. So I don't, you know, I, I I just I need to find good outlets to relieve that stress, and that would be exercising. So I, right. uh, you know, I definitely tried to exercise, but it just wasn't doing it for me. It mm-hmm. wasn't cutting. So. I just need to get more mentally fit to not do it. I know it sounds weird, like to think I gotta, I gotta get mentally strong so right. I don't fucking masturbate. <laughs> well, we can look at it, it, you can look uh, at yeah. the other side of it too. Uh-huh. Is that just like you're denying yourself like a just a biological urge, to, right? You know, so it doesn't not being able to not do it doesn't make you weak. Yeah, you know, and as long as you're not like addicted to it oh yeah and i like, you know would I mean? never consider myself to be addicted right. to porn i could go days without doing it but right. eventually i do want to do it <laughs> right exactly yeah 
So I mean, but I think it's uh, I think the other social aspect of it is yes, and I, yeah, I've that's read that a lot. that's really the more important part is yeah. just breaking free, getting out there, and yeah, right. yeah. Don't use it as a substitute. And I've even read online people like in relationships doing it also because oh yes, definitely. You know, some people consider it like cheating. Or, you know, you want to be interested in your partner and, you know, are you really doing that or communicating that if, you know, you're just wanking behind the scenes? Yeah, know, exactly. Like, you know, you want to want each other and stuff like that. So, yeah, and that's definitely another aspect of it. It's not just for single guys. It definitely helps out people that are married and just in a relationship in general. Because the, the guy that I learned about this whole, you know, or creating this not a, really a movement because there's other people who have created this like no masturbating thing it's on reddit it's on other things um but his name is gavin mckinnis and and this other guy named nero dante nero it's like a relationship guy like, almost like a pickup artist type dude oh okay sort of he's like wears like the big crazy rings and weird shirts and shit like that to get attention from women nice. peacocking uh -huh. <laughs> A lot of his information isn't that great. Like I've you know listened to some of the Dante Nero stuff, and the No Wings thing is good, but his other shit, I I don't know. Like I read the game way back in the day, and I guess it worked, but it wasn't you not attracting the type of women that you really want in your life. Right, some, like fucking weirdo psycho type chicks. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, so they created this movement, No Wings, and and Gavin's married. He's got three kids, and when you have three kids and you're married, you're both working, you know, it's, it gets hard to come together as a couple but once he stopped masturbating it shot up his relationship uh, you know because then you got to get creative then you got to actually like because it's different for women to like get them in the mood to like you yeah. know lure them into the bed or make them excited enough to want to have sex or fool around or do whatever so guys we're usually good to go right with women it takes a little bit more so it brings back that creativity instead of like getting shut down by your wife then you and then just going to masturbate you can you got to keep pursuing you got to keep mm -hmm. trying and and in reality women do like you pursuing them they mm -hmm. want you to want them type of thing so i i think it, anybody everybody men women do this yeah and it'll get you out there it'll, it'll force you to because you got to so you're gonna try to? Yeah, I'm gonna. Yeah, I'm. Gonna, yeah, I want to go longer than four days. So that's my goal: five days. <laughs> <laughs> hey, there you go. Yeah. Stepping stones. <laughs> stepping stepping wings. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just put little W's on my calendar. I'm like, okay, or N W's. No wink. No wink. And then what about day five? Was it just a. A sad face, <laughs> and then a happy up. face. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, transition. It's a. Yeah. Yeah. It's like ah, I tried. shoot. <laughs> I tried, but it's not good. Mm. 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 I'm drink drinking this uh, beer that I've never had before. It's um even keel, the mango. Oh yeah. Have you had that one yet? Uh no, not the even keel. So fucking it's, good. It's a session. It's a session. Yeah, exactly. Bought it for the for the podcast. That's how I'm over today. It. Can you want to sit? Or do you want your own? Can I have one? Yes! <laughs> <laughs> so elated. Yeah, buddy. I just felt my hangover. Yeah, just to leave. <laughs> you want the can? You want the glass? Uh, yeah, the glass would be cool. Yeah. No, I've been really wanting to try that one too. So I've had the mango. Um, they had another mango one. The, I think it might have been the Grunion. Yeah. Or something yeah, like that. Yeah, I think it was the Grunion. Yeah. It's really good. Surprisingly good. Have you had the pineapple sculpin? Yes. Very, very, very good. Yes, right. Were you a fan? Right there. Yeah, I liked it. I couldn't get into it. No? I, I felt like I couldn't really... I don't know, it just didn't taste... Not pineapple enough for yeah, you? Yeah, maybe. I don't know. It was... It just mm. was kind of like a sweeter sculpin, I think. It, yeah. And it just kind of uh, layered out the nice... What makes Sculpin real good, I think, is like that, the ending notes type of, I, it's hard to describe. Yeah. But, yeah, it's just, yeah, it's just sweet. It took off the harder edge. I like the harder edge of, of Sculpin. Yeah. yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah, exactly. I go back and forth between grapefruit and regular all the time. Yeah. Because they're both so good. Very, very good. Yeah. I was hoping they'd make, well, they had a, uh, a tea... 
Skull. Oh, thing? that yes, yeah, yeah. The, the green tea. Was it the green tea? I don't know if it was green tea. Just tea. Maybe it was green tea. It was really good. Okay, yeah. I enjoyed it. I thought yeah. that. And they had the pineapple, and then the pineapple they started producing. So mm-hmm. maybe they'll do the other one too. Right? Yeah, I think they just mm-hmm. test it out, see how people like it, and then go from there. Yeah. Yeah. I wish they would can or bottle the sours. Yes. They have a yes. sour wench. I th- yeah, I think it's. I really good. Just think I think the sours are a little bit more of like a, an acquired taste, even for like beer drinkers. Yeah. Unfortunately, they're good and it takes a little effort to make them too. Not oh, like no. that. Yeah. 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 I think they're good. It's so different. Yeah. All right, Matt's taking a sip. Swigging. Mm. Mm. It's good. That is really good. Yeah. Mm. That's delicious. That's like a treat. Uh, it even kills the session. Yep. Right? Mm-hmm. So it's a little less alcohol. Yeah. So yeah, it's just a, a lower alcohol level, and uh, it's probably like a four point something. Natural mango flavor. What does it say? Oh, I don't see it on there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's, it's decent, and just the even keel by itself is also pretty tasty. Oh, it's three point eight. Oh wow, that's even lower than I thought. Yeah. So not it's bad. got the hoppy kind of flavor with not as much alcohol. Exactly. So how do they do that? Do they just not let it ferment as long? Um, it would be the hop, like how much hops they probably use. Mm-hmm. I, I'm pretty sure that would have something to do with it. What, what about the mango? Um, they probably use mango extract or something okay. like that. Or um, the way um, a dogfish head, they, they'll throw in... Steep it. They just mm-hmm. steep it, exactly, yeah. yeah. All beer basically is is like a tea mm-hmm. that eventually ferments. Interesting. Yeah, that'd be cool if they're just slicing up tomatoes, or not tomatoes, mangoes. Mangoes, yeah. Hocking it's them in there. Definitely possible. Yeah. Absolutely. That's cool. Real tasty. It'd be though. cool to have just a nice, on your property, like a little garage or warehouse. With, One day, that's my plan. Yeah. Yeah, a little with mini brewery. Beer. Yeah. yeah. So micro, you, micro brew. Yeah. Yeah. And a nano brew, I think is mm, what I've heard mm-hmm. it called. Mm-hmm. And then you could just do it directly because you can get a pretty good size metal container and you could brew up a shit ton of beer and then you could you can even keg it or do a bunch of bottling you can do a a lot with it in this like beer atmosphere too people will get word of it and then you just ship it directly yeah i I just saw another uh, like in the area of where modern times their original Uh um places there's another brewery what was it called oh shit i forget the name of it but it's right in the same area Uh uh-huh i'm like these places are popping up everywhere now. Yeah. It, I like it. It's cool. Especially if they're making, you know, all these different uh, breweries are making good beer. Yeah. I just love that San Diego is like, seems like we're in the forefront of it, at least on the West Coast. Uh-huh. I don't, actually don't really know about <laughs> any other areas that yeah. are producing beer. I was driving, I was riding with a driver yesterday who's from LA and he'd been down here for like five years. Mm-hmm. And uh, we were talking about beer scene because he just was unfamiliar with it. And I was like, yeah, it's like crazy down here. And he's like, he said in LA, it's not like that at all. There's really? like a couple of them, but it's just not, people just don't do it as much mm. as they not here. We were also just talking about going out, clubs, and drinking in general. And he just said LA is like a huge club scene. So, yeah. like, where we have yeah. like <clears throat> specific avenues for bar scenes, you mm-hmm. know, and then if you want to go like clubbing, you can go downtown. He said it's just different club scenes. And they all, he's like, you don't go before like, 11 o'clock he's like you show oh, up right, at like right. 11 30 or whatever like he's like it's weird he's like it's weird i hang out with people down here they want to go drink at like nine o'clock at night he's like no one's gonna be there at nine o'clock right you know? right like, that's right. so weird that yeah, yeah it's, it's that much <clears throat> different you know just a couple hundred miles separating us it's yeah. that much right like a couple like hundred, hundred miles, hundred yeah, miles? Yeah, uh, you know depends what part you're i'm just thinking from. like downtown la where yeah. it'd probably be the hopping where all those fucking crazy clubs are and stuff right yeah, because here in San Diego, we've got downtown, we've got the Gaslamp District, all clubs there. Then you got more of the beach scene, PB, yeah. a lot of dance clubs and things like that there. And then with the breweries, they are, they're mostly just in the these odd places in San Diego, just sprinkled all over in these weird like exactly. business district areas. And you just go in there, you have a couple of pints, and you get to enjoy the atmosphere. That's what I much more laid back hang out you can actually have a conversation with somebody yeah, uh, exactly. over a couple of beers uh, as opposed to like yelling at each other in a club and... yeah yeah totally <laughs> what was that um uh oh Fan- fanagan's mcfadden's mcfadden's right was that like that dancing place 
It's yes. like a big club atmosphere. It's downtown. That's what it's called, right? They would text us all oh, the yes, time. Oh, yes, that's right. Yeah. That's, that's the one, yeah. Yeah, I always think of that place when I think of, like, just loud dancing yeah. craziness. Yeah, people dancing on the bar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> Man, it's crazy just the older you get. I don't know, like, it'd probably be fun to go check it out, but it also seems like a lot of work. Oh, yeah, I think <laughs> I'm done with that. Yeah. I think I'm done with that. Yeah, I just, I don't see, like, a, a instance where I would go do that again. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Uh, unless it was, like, a really, like, close friend who, like, just really wanted it's to It's their do birthday it. thing yeah. or something. Yeah. And and I'm like, okay, if you want to go there, I'll, I'm along for the ride. Here yeah, we go. Yeah, for sure. But now I'm just like, eh, that's cool. Yeah. We're good. <laughs> watch the show something like that well matt you got uh edc plans for this summer that's man true, that's yeah. very exciting that's about in a, about a month and a half away wow yeah. that's so, right yeah, yeah yeah i'm excited i think uh i think it's gonna be a that'll be time. a lot of fun i'm going a lot with of fun a, a group of edc veterans mm. even though i've been before these people go every yeah year. they go every year so they mm. they got it down yeah yeah so i'm excited to kind of see it through their eyes a little bit and uh I'll be a little bit more prepared. Exactly. About yeah. What to expect? Uh, I just, you know, want to hydrate. And, yes. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And just not drink the night before. Yeah. Remember, you can bring your camel back. Just can't have right. anything in it, and then you can fill that bad boy up. Be hydrated the whole time. Yeah. Yeah. And also, like, I really, you know, that's why I'm gonna start riding my bike. Get, get <laughs> yeah, car, yeah man, you got to prepare shape. yourself. Yeah. Yeah, man. Because it's three. Four crazy nights, depending on what you do the first night when yeah. you get there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You guys are going to have a kick ass time. Yeah. It's going to be fun. Hell yeah. So, one day, they like to dress up different every day. Oh, right, right. I've just said, I'm down for whatever. Mm -hmm. I just. Are you going to let let her pick outfits for you? Or? I mean, in a way, yeah. Yeah. Be, are you going to match? You guys going to be matching. Okay. So, yeah, so <laughs> my girlfriend and her best friend. They're for one night. They're dressing up like stormtroopers, mm. and then I would be a Darth Vader. Oh, so nice! Like, they had some really cool ideas. I'm just going along with it. But then another, they just came up with this other because there's a group. Are they gonna have a Harry Potter night? I don't think so. They're gonna do a Mario characters. Oh, that's a good one. Yeah. So I'm trying to decide like which one I'm gonna be, but. You should be, the, be one funny. of the most random. I was gonna be Mario characters out there. Or. Uh, my girlfriend was going to be uh, the cloud guy. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, yeah. one of I those that random. Was awesome. Yeah, yeah. Like, That's such a good idea. And I was going to be, I was going to be Toad. Toad's like, good. Yeah, I like Toad. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, you have a big old hat. Big old mushroom hat. <laughs> yeah. mushroom hat. Yeah. Everyone's going to come up to you. They're like, what's up, yeah, mushroom exactly. man? What you got on stock? I'm going to mushrooms here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You could even be just the star, just to have a big old like little star costume. That's a good idea. And I'm everyone loves that. the star. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> that's true. Well, it's just Invincible a white, white shirt with a star on it. Uh, yeah, that nice. make it simple. Nice. Keep it simple. Yeah. And the great thing with EDC is like it doesn't even really matter who's going to be there because you know they will have some really good, big, well-known, you know, DJs yeah. and. They don't really have bands there, but no. DJs. Yeah. Yeah. No, it'll be fun. They haven't done... I'm so curious to hear how much it's changed, because we went in 2013, right? Yeah. Three years and ago. so, yeah, three years ago. Mm. I wonder, yeah, I wonder how much it changed. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see. And another fun aspect, you don't really think about it, is just driving from Vegas all the way out to the racetrack, because it's just oh, yeah. lines of people hanging out their windows, getting crazy, playing loud music, and yeah. it's just a big, crazy pilgrimage to the stadium, to the to the racetrack. Yeah. That'll be fun. Yeah. Yeah, bud. Any recommendations? Oh yeah, let's do yeah, let's do some recommendations. So okay. right, I highly recommend Gavin McInnes's book, The Death of Cool. Um, so yeah, I read it a few weeks ago, uh, before I started, before we started reading on writing the Stephen King book and I have never laughed so hard and wanted to puke so much reading wow. one book. Like I recommend it to anyone and everyone. This book is full of debauchery. It's full of crazy stories. Um, Gavin McInnes, he's, uh, one of the original founders of Vice magazine. So he That's goes right. all into, uh, uh, you know, starting with Vice and he was into the, like, legit like punk rock scene and you know back in the 80s and, uh -huh. and and early 90s and he's considered like the godfather of hipsters and 
He's just such wow. a fascinating, crazy dude. How he writes his book is like kind of how he speaks, which oh, okay. makes it fun to to read you can in a way. Really hear his voice. Exactly, uh -huh. exactly, and it's not just like would be like a boring biography or, or anything like that. I guess this would be considered a memoir, right? If you write your own life, it's a memoir. And then if someone else writes about you, it's a biography. Is that how it goes? I don't know. Uh, to be honest, I don't know. I'll have to look that I up I think that's point. more of a memoir. Yeah. Okay. But, but yeah. Um, so yeah, I definitely recommend that. The Death of Cool, I'm pretty, yeah, I'm pretty sure he's got it on Audible version. And then, um, and then the book's really cheap. It's like maybe like 10 bucks on Amazon. Cool. The paperback. So I recommend that. I'm, I'm a, I'm yeah, I want to read it. Yeah, definitely yeah. read it. I want to want to read something where I'll laugh. Yes, yeah, so you will definitely laugh yeah. and you'll definitely be part you're like, oh, oh my God, I can't believe this is happening. <laughs> I can't believe I'm reading this right now. Nice. Yeah. Cool. That's great. Um, I listen to a lot of music podcasts. I usually talk about it. I'll just go through like a quick handful yeah, of please. ones that I like to listen to. Uh, uh, one is called, one's, a newer one I listen to is called The Record podcast um uh another one's called washed up emo and one i like that title. those are both <laughs> yeah those are both guys who just interview people from the music scene mostly the booming music scene that occurred like during like probably from the two early 2000s to like 2006 2007 it's my decade that's exactly. where like my that's like my window of music that i love right yeah so it's a lot of like independent like underground scene like, awesome. stuff like some of the bands are still active and touring. Some of them are have long gone, and yeah. you know, I think it's kind of like catching up and, and talking about you know the good old days and stuff like that. And cool. anyone who was a fan and went to shows during that period, it's awesome to get like this behind the music type stories that uh, can occur. So those are two good ones. The can you say the title again? Vinyl. Washed, washed up emo. Washed up emo. Is a good one. Um. And then uh, for more like current or active bands, mm -hmm. probably that you and I listen to, mm -hmm. Lead Singer Syndrome. Lead Singer Syndrome. Is a good one. That's And he's the singer of Silverstein. Mm -hmm. And uh, just, I'd say start there. And his most recent podcast is with Anthony Ranieri from Bayside. Oh, hell yeah. I'm great. definitely up downloading that one. Awesome. And I've heard a few interviews with him, and this is probably the best one. Okay, so, cool. So those two are great. And then some other ones. Which are, I, we do plan on seeing Bayside in September, right? Uh, August. August, yes. yes. Um, and then some other ones quickly are 100 Words or Less podcast, Absolute Punk podcast, which is a, a music blog, and they do a web uh, uh, podcast. Yeah. And uh, that's about it. Yeah. All right, cool. Yeah. And, uh, the guys from Emory do a podcast called bad christian and that's that's a not just a music one that's just a kind of like everything yeah kind of podcast like we do and that's I, really good i remember seeing emory live once and they at soma they awesome. put on a killer show yeah. they're so good and they're still doing their things and they wow really they talk a lot about the behind the scenes of what's it like to be a well, musician. So, they'll break down finances really and, wow like so what they make per show mm -hmm. how they make per show wow. they make money and i'm i've always been fascinated about that i'll definitely have to check out their podcast then yeah sweet and then uh, one of the the bassist and singer for Emory, Matt Carter, mm -hmm. it has his own called Break It Down okay. podcast, and he even interviewed Peter Holmes on his. Nice. Yeah, so it's cool when the podcast you listen to all kind of come full circle. Cool. So if anyone's into music and stuff like that, those are great things to check Ooh, out. Oh, I've got one more. Um, mm -hmm. Melissa Villasenor. She's coming to American Comedy Co. I'm pretty sure in June or July. So oh, okay. check the internets and buy tickets to go see Melissa Villasenor at the American Comedy Co. All right. Um, so yeah, um, you can find me on Instagram, Twitter, all that good stuff at Sean Evans Photo. That's S-E-A-N-E-V-A-N-S-P-H-O-T-O. Sean Evans Photo. And then I'm Pac Matt at Twitter. P A C M A T T. Alrighty. Send us some love. And uh, you can find the podcast on YouTube and hopefully iTunes again someday. Just we'll figure it out. It's in the works. Yeah, hey, go, we were born in the 80s. We're <laughs> trying to figure out technology. It's going so quickly. <laughs> Bye. Bye.
Clapped in church on Sunday morning Grandma's hand Played a tambourine so well Grandma's hand Used to issue out a warning She'd say, Billy, don't you run so fast Might fall on a piece of glass Might be snakes there in that grass Grandma's hand Unwed mother, grandma's hand Used to ache sometimes and swell Grandma's hand Used to lift her face and tell her She'd say, baby grandma understand That you really love that man Don't you run so fast Might fall on a piece of glass Might be snakes there in that grass Understand that you really love that man. 